Breeze Nation, what's good? It's your boy Pat the Designer back at it again here. Appreciate you guys for tuning in and rocking with us for another episode of the Windy City Breeze Sports Talk Daily. On today's episode, Rich Eisen giving a very interesting sleeper prediction for the Chicago Bears, saying that they could be a team who makes the NFC title game. What would it take for the Chicago Bears to get to the title game? I'm going to give you my five keys on today's episode, man. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave that five-star review. Y'all know what to do. Appreciate you guys for tuning in and showing love as you always do. And I need y'all to show love in the best way that you possibly can. And that is to, uh, come on, push the button. Y'all know what it is. Come on. Push the button. Push it. Come on, push the button. button. Yeah, come on, push the button. You heard what she said. You heard what she said. Push the like button. We appreciate you guys for supporting as you always do. Also hit that notification bell so that you can get notified every time we drop a video or go live. Now, this is pre-recorded for some people that are wondering because I know people are going to be like, is this pre-recorded? Why the heck did he put it out like this? Because we we got some stuff going on today that needed to be taken care of. No, I still want to get y'all the content out here. But, you know what I mean, your boy trying to make some bread out here. So, yeah, we in these streets. But still wanted to get this content out because I thought that this was a very interesting topic. We had a chance to hear from Rich Eisen on what he believes could happen. A team that could be a sleeper this season as he picks the Chicago Bears to be a sleeper to make the NFC Championship game. And that, to me... Really caught my attention. Uh, he said, if Caleb Williams can be one of the best players on the field and get this offense going and the defense can play the way that it played and the offense can start cooking with Caleb Williams, the Bears can make the NFC Championship game is a sleeper team I'm adding into the mix. And so instantly I got to thinking, okay, there's a lack of content right now, right? So you got to say some things. But realistically speaking, what would have to happen for the Chicago Bears to make an NFC championship game this season? What would the Bears have to have go? I mean, listen, a lot of things have to go right for you to make the NFC championship game as a whole, right? I mean, you're talking about health. You're talking about scheme. You're talking about literally being one of the best teams on both sides. of A lot of things already have to go right for that to happen for you, but what are some of the main things that we need to see the Chicago Bears do this season that ch increases their chances of making that happen? And so I've compiled this list of five things. And so let's jump straight into it. Don't want to waste you guys time with a long introduction because I think that this is a uh, this is a great way to uh, to get some more excitement on, on what we've seen in training camp and different things like that. Um, here's my number five thing. I'll go from five to one. I'll go from five to one. So to me, least important to most important, I guess. M number five, Matt Eberflus has to learn when to tell his team when to be aggressive and when to play conservative. Last season, we saw a team that seemed like it never knew when it needed to keep its foot on the gas and when it wanted to hit the brakes and kind of slow things down. We would see a team that would just say, we've done enough. And I, that was my biggest problem with the Bears last season, right? It, the, the hits principle shouldn't be the hit until you've done enough to stop hitting principle. And that's kind of what we saw. Think about how many games last season Bears go into the second half with a major lead and you just see them not even attempt to put the ball in the air or not even attempt to uh, uh, um, to, to try and continue to attack downfield. And so teams started knowing how to play you. They start playing just for the run. When they're playing just for the run, now all of a sudden you're not running the football as hard as you once were. And now you're sitting at the end of this game and you're going, how the heck did we just lose this? We saw the Bears do that Four, I believe four times last season in a whole. Um, of course, the number one is that Denver game where it just seemed like in the second half, they just, they were like, we're very content with the lead that we have. We're good here and we're going to be fine. I also think you saw it a little bit in the Washington game that the Bears did end up winning, but it just took DJ Moore having a phenomenal performance and basically taking a short pass and turning it into a massive gain for you to seal the deal on that game. And then, of course, you think about that Detroit Lions game. The Detroit Lions game in the second half of that game, you passed the football one time. One time. You put the ball in the air one time. 
And the one time you put the ball in the air was at the very end of the game when they had already gone down and scored a touchdown to put themselves up in a very improbable situation. And then you told Justin Fields, throw a Hail Mary pass to Tyler Scott. Tyler Scott doesn't run under it. We lose the game. And then, of course, I think the Cleveland game is another situation of that. And it's not just aggressive offensively, right? You may think, oh, well, yeah, they weren't aggressive enough offensively. Go back to that Lions game. In that Lions game, defensively, at the end of that game, no aggression, not trying to get to the quarterback. You had been getting to Matt, or to uh, Jared Goff all day. All of a sudden, you weren't trying to do that. You're playing prevent defense. You get to a point where on the final drive of the game, you don't like the fact of how the prevent defense is going. You remove Montez Sweat from the field, and you remove Tremaine Evans from the field two of your best players, whether they're having a tough day or not, and you have them standing on the sidelines next to J-Mac, and J-Mac's sitting there looking at him like, what the heck are these guys doing over here? Like, that is a problem, and that to me is is why I still have a lot of concerns around Matt Eberflus. I think that Flus is a fine DC. But as a head coach, you have to be able to tell your team when it's time to go, when it's time to put your foot on the gas, and when it's time to take your foot off. And you have to have a feel for the game to know that moment. And a lot of what we talk about is feel for the game. I wonder if Matt Eberflus has that as a head coach. So that's my number five right now. One of the things that I am actually more concerned about heading into this season than maybe, nah, I think this is a pretty good order of things that I'm actually, what, what has to happen also goes with what I'm concerned about. Uh, number four for me. Uh, not only does, uh, and, and by the way, hit that like button, subscribe to the page, lead a five-star review. Y'all know what to do. Um, if you're seeing this video, uh, it means the video was pushed to you. Appreciate you for watching the video. If you haven't been getting the content pushed to you, please, please, please join the, you can join the Discord no matter what, but join the Discord in the description below and uh, you can get all of the latest content, all of the updates from whenever we post our video. They will all be in the Discord and you'll be able to get the notifications for that as well. Um, let's get the number four on my list, Braxton Jones. Braxton Jones is number four on my list and he's number four on my list because I think that not only does Braxton Jones have to have a healthy season, which he did his rookie year, so I'm not that, I'm not overly concerned about Braxton not having a healthy season the things that he dealt with last year kind I mean like it's football it's kind of what happens when you're playing football right but number four for me Braxton Jones has to become a top 10 left tackle in this NFL well Pat that seems very lofty that seems very high why are you putting such high expectations on Braxton Jones because the things that we're trying to accomplish are lofty and high making an NFC title game is not just something you do it is a very difficult thing to do and you have to be able to go out there and do and have everybody playing at the best version of themselves and I think that Braxton has a lot of skills that he can utilize that are very good. Braxton Jones on the run blocking, I have no problem with. I think that he's solid when you run it to his side. I think the fact that you have Tevin Jenkins over there as well absolutely adds to running to that left side. And I think that that's something that the Bears are going to be able to take advantage of with DeAndre Swift, if Khalil Herbert's on this team, with Roshan Johnson this season running the football. I also think the screen game to that side is going to be fairly solid as well because that ball is getting out quick. But, and this has been my my gripe with Braxton the entire offseason. I'm not going to change it now. The pass pro needs work. you got to figure out how the, the screaming weakness that people take advantage of often, and it's not just the Miles Garretts of the NFL. It's not just the Micah Parsons of the NFL that are doing it. There, there are... Players who are, you know, not the left tackles that are less talked about that know your weakness that look to take advantage of it. You have to have that fixed coming into this season. And I hate that he's not out there right now because he's not getting an opportunity to do that. We still got a ton of time until, of course, we get to the regular season, that Tennessee Titans game. But that time is dwindling away. So we keep saying we got a ton of time. We got a ton of time. We got a ton of time. And then we turn around. Listen, we, I was saying we got a ton of time and I'm heading to the Hall of Fame game next week. You know what I mean? Like, that's where this gets so interesting to me. Now, if Braxton Jones fixes that, if Braxton Jones can fix that issue with the bull rush, Braxton Jones does do a good job on swim moves. He does do a good job keeping guys in front of them when they're not trying to use those power moves. And so I think that could take him alone into being one of those top 
10 left tackles. But the left tackle alone position alone is a concern for me. I talked about this yesterday on the episode, and I also posted a video this morning clipping out just that part where the left tackle position that you have, Larry Borm is in that position. And J Mac corrected me. He said, You can't say Larry Borm's not good. He's one of the best players in the world, and that's why he's on the team. I agree with that. He's one of the 450 best football players in the world. I will give you that. I'm not saying that he's not. What I am saying is he is not the guy I want backing up Braxton Jones heading into this season. He is not the guy that I want to see out there when this Bears team is trying to, I guess in this situation, make an NFC title game, right? He's not the guy that I want out there in case Braxton Jones goes down. The problem is you don't have another answer there. The problem is you don't have anybody else that you can throw in there that you feel seriously confident about. The other guy that's going to get that job if Braxton Jones does not make this team, or I'm sorry, if uh, if Larry Borm does not make this team, is Karan Amageji who has had no off-season program, has no timeline for a return. The Bears are working him back very, very slowly, and they're going to take their time with it, which is fine. I'm not mad at that. But then you're just going to throw him out there during the season at some point because Braxton's going to have plays where he needs a breather, where he needs a break and stuff like that. And you're going to say, there you go, my guy. It's your turn. I don't think that a team that doesn't have depth at the at, at the offensive line is a team that you can talk about continuously uh, winning games on a, on a steady basis unless they have perfect health. Now, Braxton Jones has been one of our more healthy players, so if he's out there, and I'm more focused on Braxton Jones here than anything, if he's out there and he's out there for 15 of 17 games, I think that you could be an NFC championship contender. But it's going to take something like that where he's got his issues that he has said at the podium openly that he has, and we've been able to see that on the field, and that is that bull rush. That is him getting pushed back right into the quarterback's lap. If we see that improve, there's no reason Braxton Jones can't be a top 10 guy. He's good at a lot of the other things. Very similar. I'll, I'll say Braxton is in a way similar to Jalen Johnson in this respect. If he can fix that, it's very similar to Jalen Johnson last season where Jalen Johnson had the PBUs. He had the coverage numbers. He was already one of the best. If I need a guy that's going to stick to a receiver, Jalen Johnson was that guy. But when he was talking about getting paid as one of the higher paid players in the league and when he talked about betting on himself, the biggest question that we had was, where the heck are the takeaways? Where are the interceptions? I don't pay DBs that don't get interceptions. Well, you know what? I'm not paying big money to left tackles who don't stop bull rushes because you know what people are going to do if they know you can't stop the bull rush, especially teams that have guys who can move across every spot on the offensive line or on the, yeah, on the defensive line. They're going to find you. They're going to bull rush you and you're going to get pushed back into Caleb Williams. So Fix that, and I think Braxton Jones is a really solid piece, and I think the Bears could see a ton of success this season. Now, the two things that I have said so far, Matt Eberflus knows when to tell his team to be aggressive and play, and when to play conservative, and Braxton Jones has to become a top 10 left tackle in this NFL. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think that these are the requirements for the Chicago Bears to be able to go out there and make an NFC championship game? I'll be talking to you guys down in the comments as well. Number three for me. This one's easy. And it, it's number three for me because I think that there are other things that are actually more important than this right away. I at least two. And I know that this is the main storyline, the biggest storyline, but I could see this not getting to the perfect place and us still being a really, really good team this year. And that's Caleb Williams has to be Caleb Williams. What does that mean, Pat? Caleb Williams is himself. Of course he is. Caleb Williams has to be the person that people are perceiving him to be, which means you have to be not only just a really good player, but rookie of the year caliber, which I'm not just talking about the quarterback that goes out there and is the best quarterback in the group so he gets rookie of the year i'm talking about without a doubt you're sitting there looking at caleb williams going well of course he's the rookie of the year 
For you to make an NFC Championship game, you need to see similar things that you saw with C.J. Stroud. You need to see similar things that you saw with Patrick Mahomes year two. You need to see similar things that you saw with Justin Herbert year one. You need to see a player hit the ground running and absolutely run out the gym like Forrest Gump returning a kickoff. Like that to me is, of course, and and that goes without saying. The quarterback being good is one of the most important things for you to make that that deep run, right? We very rarely see teams that don't have a really good quarterback make championship runs. Now, you will see teams who have a, a good quarterback that can kind of build around him and insulate him. We've seen that multiple times, but which is why I still think, right, like this is number three for me because if Caleb Williams is good, and not great his rookie year, I do still believe the Bears can can compete and go a long way in the playoffs. But I don't know if you get to the NFC Championship unless you have a quarterback back there who is consistently dominating offensively because he's going to put this offensive pe- these offensive pieces in place to succeed. He's the one that's going to get the ball. right. There is no Keenan Allen. There is no DJ Moore. There is no Roma Dunze success. right? All of these weapons we have if Caleb Williams is not that rookie of the year caliber player. Now, does that mean that he needs to be lacing at 50 yards every pass? No. You just need to make quick decisions, make the right decision, get the ball out, get it into the hands of your playmakers, and let them be playmakers. But I do think that some that that comes with that that mental side of it, the quick decision making, the okay, I got to go out here and one two. What we've seen in training camp, I will say that what we've seen of him in training camp, literally, you haven't seen Caleb Williams take a ton of time to wait for something to open up. You see him going through his progressions. You see him trying to find his spots. If it doesn't happen there, you will see him extend the plays with his legs, which I think also is a benefit to the Bears this season. But for this to happen, more first and foremost most to me you just have to see Caleb Williams be Caleb Williams which means to me being a rookie of the year caliber kind of player and that to me like I think that that comes with a little bit of time that may not be in game one that may happen game three that may happen game five but at some point there needs to be without a shadow of a doubt we all are looking around at ourselves going nah he's the best rookie in this class not even a question That, to me, is one of the most important things that you can see for the Chicago Bears team to go out there and make a NFC championship. Now, I think that was the easiest one, and I'm sure most of you were waiting for it. Like, when's he going to mention Caleb Williams? But I don't think that it is the most important one. Like I said, you can have a good quarterback and go a long way in the playoffs. NFC championship might be tough with that, but you can have a good quarterback and go a really long way in the playoffs if you have a team built, oh, I don't know, like how the Chicago Bears have built this. But there's a couple of things that need to be in place no matter what for you to do that with a good quarterback. And that's why number two on my list is consistency at center. You have to have it. You have to have it. If you do not have it, you will not win. It's just what it is. If you do not have it, you will not win. This, this, project that we keep doing with the center position of go out and get a guy who was a guard, switch him to center. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work for Cody White here for a couple of years. You bring in Lucas Patrick, try to do the same thing. Lucas Patrick can't block anybody. He can't stay healthy. Cody White here gets back in there. He can't block anybody. He can't snap anymore. He can't stay healthy. You bring in Dan Feeney. Dan Feeney's the number three guy out here. He has a nice game. You try and put him out there for some spot moments. He can't stay healthy. All right, like It's been the same thing and I keep saying this you haven't had a guy that you looked at at center that you were like that's the answer since Olin Krutz you've had guys that have filled in right Kyle Long played some snaps there Cody Whitehair played some snaps there you've had bodies but every time you look around it feels like a, a scene from uh uh, uh what's, what's that show where it's like uh uh him him her him him bodies 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 like the bodies are littered everywhere And that's why I think, especially with a young quarterback, especially with Caleb Williams trying to figure this whole thing out, that's one that I think you need at the start of the season. That's one I think you need to walk into Tennessee 
or Tennessee walks into here, you need to walk into Soldier Field and go, that's the answer. That's what I'm looking for. Yep, there it is, right there. I see it. Because you haven't had that in almost 20 years. 20 might be a lot. When did when did Olin retire? Was Olin on that last was Olin on that last championship team? Or that NFC uh championship team? Let me see. When did Olin Cruz retire? Because if he was, I believe he was, Olin Cruz retired 2011. So he wasn't on that team. He was on New Orleans that year. Uh, but 2010 was the year. Is that the year we went to the NFC? Oh, yeah, that is the year we went to the NFC championship, right? Because 2012 was the offense. Yeah, we were first in our division. Big shock, right? We were first in our division. Lovey Smith goes 11 and five. We lost in the uh, in the conference championship to the Green Bay Packers, 14 to 21. Yeah, the last season you had a center is the last season you were in the NFC Championship. I may have put this too low. This may be number one. Y'all let me know in the comments below if I need to flip-flop this. I may have thrown this one too low. That tells you everything you need to know about the center position. We can talk about all these other positions. We can talk about where other guys should line up. We can talk about where other guys fit. We can talk about all of this. You need to have your center position locked up. And you need to have that to me by the start of this season, whether that is going out and signing Connor Williams, whether it is Coleman Shelton, whether it is Ryan Bates. But I got questions on all three guys that you have options at right now. And people were looking at me crazy when I was like, draft Jackson Powers Johnson. I like Karan Amageji. I'm glad we got Austin Booker. I think he's really good, and he's going to turn into a nice piece. I would have packaged both those picks and let and next year's number second round pick from the Panthers, and I would have went out and got my center of the future. By the way, who's killing it at camp? But that's just me. The last time you were in an NFC title game. I didn't even have that stat pulled up before we got here. The last time you were in an NFC title game, you had the best center. You had your center position uh, locked up. That checks out. That checks out. Sweet Jesus. Oh, you want to talk about consistency? Olin Krutz that season, 16 games played, 16 games started. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Leave a five-star review. Y'all know what to do, man. Uh, so far, the five uh, 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 most or biggest keys that the Chicago Bears have to have locked up for them to make the NFC Championship game, as Rich Eisen predicted, have been Matt Eberflus has to uh, learn when to tell the team when to be aggressive. Braxton Jones has to become a top 10 left tackle. Uh, Caleb Williams has to be the Caleb Williams that we expect him to be, meaning a rookie of the year caliber player. And you have to have consistency at center, which leads us to number one. This is number one. Sex. I'm sorry. I got, I got wild there. My, my bad, y'all. My bad. I, I went down a path. I went down a path. I don't know if y'all went there with me, but if you did, you knew where I went. Shout out to you. When, what happened when music was like that, man? I missed that. I missed that. That's a sidebar. That has nothing to do with anything. But I, what happened when music was like that, dog? Yeah, you know I mean, when you just got that random like banger, yeah, you know I mean, you got falsetto out there. In a falsetto, it's like, ooh, ooh. All right, that's enough. Uh, number one. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. That center thing really took me down a path. Number one. And I think this is the most important thing because I think that this opens up options for you offensively. This opens up how much you can do on the defensive end. This opens up money for you offensively, and maybe it even changes what you need to utilize that second round pick on if you were to trade next season or uh, uh, this coming season, that second round pick. And Ryan Poles has been somebody who has definitely been willing to trade the second round pick in season. Javon Dexter has to take a major major step in year two. 
We've got a lot of excitement around Javon. We got to talk to him yesterday at the press conference. He looks like he's champing at the bit to try and get into uh, 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 pads and we start bull rushing guys and get in the backfield. And he seems like he's figured out the penetrating style. He's going to be the person I am most fun. The, the Javon Dexter center battle is the one I am going to be absolutely locked in on. Every single play next when, when Friday and Saturday, I will have evaluation on Caleb Williams, but there will be a heavy evaluation on Dexter and on the center, because that is going to be my biggest question as we head into this hall of fame game. But I digress. Javon Dexter. If he can become the three technique that you need, I believe that he is the one that opens things up for everybody on this team. What I mean by that is now you're not blitzing your linebackers nearly as much. Now you're not sending your safeties and DBs nearly as much because Javon Dexter creating pressure up the middle with his size, which something he said in the press conference yesterday that really, really stood out and resonated with me was he wants to be able to have, or he, he learned, I should say, not wants to be able to, I, I guess he does want to, but he learned that, and last year, he was just trying to push his way all the way to the quarterback and trying to get a sack, which is fine. You want to push the pocket, but this year, he wants to push that pocket, get a good push, and then get his hands up. Use that big frame and that wingspan to block balls over the middle so that you can create those tip passes, those turnovers, those interceptions that come from that. He wants to be able to go out there and use that frame the right way, and I think that that's going to be so incredibly important for him this season. Season because, like I said, when the pads come on, that's what you're really looking to see. When the pads come on, can he push the pocket? Can he get in Caleb Williams' face? Can he force Caleb Williams off his spot? The other thing about that is forcing Caleb Williams off his spot because the pressure is coming back at him. Usually the thing that throws young quarterbacks off or quarterbacks in general off the most is that pressure in your face. Now I've got to make a decision left or right. That's going to open things up, of course, for Montez Sweat. But think about it on the opposite end. We saw Javon De or I'm sorry, we saw Dexter uh, breathe, Pat. We saw Demarcus Walker. Be a seven sack guy when in a system that the quarterback was being pushed towards him. That quarterback being pushed his direction could open things up for him. He could be that guy opposite edge of Montez Sweat that you can rely on, or even a young Austin Booker. If you feel you want to use D Walk more on the inside, you get young Austin Booker out there who has shown in multiple plays, especially when getting with the first team off uh, defense, that. He can still find his way into the backfield. He's been a very bright spot for me as he worked his way up through the week. Um, but seeing him get back there on that consistency, it just makes his life easier. And you know what that does? If I've got D walk getting set six to seven sacks, or I've got Austin Booker in his rookie year getting four, five, six sacks, uh, you know what that does? That uh, allows my team to go spend money possibly on the other side if we've got some questions. The other side being, a.k.a. a guy like Connor Williams. The other side being, a.k.a. maybe a future left tackle that might be disgruntled and you want to make a trade for him. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if, you, if you've if you been watching at all on the, uh, the little ticker bar here down below, uh, I think at some point on there, I got the notification that Trent Williams is holding out from camp right now, looking to get a, uh, a new contract with the San Francisco 49ers. Um, could you be in on that market? One of the best left tackles in the league. If he, you know, gets signed to a one-year deal, something like that, we'll see what ends up happening there. But here, my biggest thing right now with this Bears team is go out there and make sure that that position is solidified up the middle on the other side. Because if it is... It just makes everything easier. Think about Henry Belton when we had him on the show, right? How how he was able to just be so quick up the middle, disrupt so, so much, and be able to attack guys anywhere on the field. Like, that's what you want to see from that three technique. And Javon has the skill to do it. I just need to see if he's going to be able to do it in this season. And those are my five keys 
to the Chicago Bears making the NFC Championship game this season. Now, I want to know how you guys feel, man. Let me know in the comments below. What are your keys to the Chicago Bears making the NFC Championship game this season? As Rich Eisen has predicted, I'll be down in the comments as well. As always, man, it's your boy Pat the Designer back at it again. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bird done. One love. Peace.